Let's finish the night. Hi everyone, I'm Marcel. And I'm Mrs. Snakeworks, back by popular demand. So apparently, Marcel forgot the banners existed, so let's get those finished first. Simple Minds sang about forgetting banners, you know. Don't you forget about me. So first up, Vallejo Model Air Gun Metal. Marcel applied the gun metal to all the metal areas on the banners, the chains and the hanging parts. They probably have a real name, but nobody knows it. What do you mean nobody knows? Well, uh, you Deck officer! Deck officer! The Empire Strikes Back is probably my favourite Star Wars movie, you know. All the sequels were pretty trash. Well, apart from Rogue One, that was quite good, I think. The next base colour is Mephiston Red. It's running low, so please remind me to get some more. I then apply the Mephiston Red to all of the trim on the banners. With the red applied, we can now do some washers. Now I've never been a fan of waiting for washers to dry. How long should they take to dry? I'm gonna ask someone. How long does a wash take to dry? 24 hours. 24 hours? You've got 12. Okay. The first wash we shall be using is Null Oil. Null. I spelt it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck's sake. <laughs> the first wash we shall be using is Nuln Oil. This one's in a handy pot holder to prevent spills. Marcel then applied the Nuln Oil to all of the metals and red areas, trying his best not to get it on the yellow. Now I tried my best. Sometimes that's all you can do. And that's okay. Someone beeping their horn outside. This week, I have been mostly watching MS Paints. He's painted up some vehicles from the Aliens movies and I think they look wonderful. Go give him a look if you get a moment. I mix up a colour that is way too watery and immediately I don't like. And then move on to a colour that I do like straight out of the pot so that'll teach me to try and mix my own colours. Next up it's Retributor Gold. We like this gold a lot, as it's gold, unlike a lot of other alleged golds. Using this gold, I then painted the tips of the hanger things. We still don't know the name of these. Before we apply a wash, it's best to wait for the gold to dry completely. I feel there's a lot of waiting around for paint to dry in this video. Next up, it's Drucky Drucky Violet. Using the Drucky Violet, Marcel then apply this to the gold areas on the banner hanger. What is it supposed to be? Drucky, I think. Drucky. Okay, nope. got it right. We then wait for it to dry again. While the paints were drying and the weather was good, Snakeworks Jr. and I took the lunchbox out for a little spin. Push. Well done. We then return to the Retributor Gold. I repaint the gold areas, leaving the drucky violet in the recesses. With the gold applied, we have this. But those hangers are still not finished. I might actually have overworked these, you know? Especially for the small amount of detail that they are. Next up is fan favourite Agrax Earthshade. Marcel then applied the Agrax Earthshade to those gold tips on the hanger. Guess what? Then we wait for it to dry. Luckily, we've finished the hangers now, though. Next up, we return to my almost empty Mephiston Red. Using the Mephiston Red, I then repaint the red areas of the banner, leaving the shaded parts in the recesses. I then grab my Vallejo model colour, Vermilion Red. It's a lovely red shade. I then highlight all those red areas with the Vermilion Red. With that highlight applied, the red parts are finished too. Apparently, vermilion has something to do with worms. I'm not sure how true that is. Okay, so next up we are going to use some gloss varnish. Marcel then applied a few thin coats of gloss varnish to the main areas of the banners, leaving it to dry thoroughly in between coats. When the gloss varnish is dry, we have a nice shiny surface to apply decals to. Now it's best to leave your gloss to dry overnight. So while I wait, let's move on to another part of the night. So next up, it's Vallejo Model Color Black. 
Using the black, I then paint the little window canopy on the top of the night. Is it even a window? Nobody knows. I then assemble a team of blues for painting the window. Vallejo model colour blue, Vallejo game colour magic blue, Vallejo model colour deep sky blue and Vallejo model colour white. It's basically just dark to light blues and then a white. Starting with blue, I then paint around three quarters of the canopy or window. Then with the magic blue, I paint inside the previous blue layer. I then repeat that again with the deep sky blue, making the brighter area smaller every time. Then finally with the white, I apply a little highlight line and a couple of dots in the black part to simulate reflections. To finish off, we need the gloss varnish again. I then apply a coat of gloss varnish to the window, finishing it off with a nice shiny sheen. I find painting big lenses and windows quite enjoyable, but not when it's Space Marine eyes. They're too small. Anyway, let's return to the banners, shall we? Next up, we need some decals. We're going to select these doggy style ones, one big and one little. We then give them a soak in some water, after a few seconds, they begin to lift off their backing paper and are ready to be applied to the banners. We applied the big doggy head to the big banner and the little doggy head to the small banner. The doggy style icons are the House Podaxia logos. We then find some decal softener. In this instance, we are using Microsol. Using a nice soft brush, Marcel then applied a coat of Microsol to those banners to help them adhere to the surface. We then leave them overnight for the Microsol to work its magic. The Microsol does weird things. It causes the decals to bubble up and wrinkle. After a few hours, they will settle back down, but that's why it's best to leave them overnight, just to be sure. Okay, the Microsol is all dry, and now we can move on. I want some matte varnish, so I'm going to use this. Windsor and Newton Galleria matte varnish. I usually use it with an airbrush, but I'm going to try it with a brush today, so please wish me luck. I then apply a few thinned coats of the matte varnish to the entirety of the banner decal area, allowing it to fully dry between coats. I used a hairdryer for this, and I shouldn't have. Here's why I shouldn't have used a hairdryer. Can you see the white frosted bits in the corner? Now we have more to fix. Now this is yet another reason I should have tackled these decals along with the ones from before. Okay, we now return to the Agrax Earthshade. Oh dear, we appear to have made a huge mess. Marcel has knocked the pot over and spilt his wash. That will teach him for not using a pot holder. Look at him attempting to suck it back up with a pipette. Fool. So using the remnants of the Agrax Earthshade, Marcel then gave the banner edges a panel lining to cover up those frosted areas. Hopefully this will do the trick. It's ended up looking a bit of a mess, but I guess it adds to the realism. Ah, please remind me to add another pot of Agrax Earthshade to my shopping list. The next colour is Vallejo model colour light grey. Using the side of my brush, I then edge highlight the knight's head. Highlight the night. It rhymes. With that done, we have this. That didn't take long at all. Okay then, so the next few steps have a few issues. So please be prepared. First up, it's Vallejo model colour blue. Then Marcel painted all the areas he wanted to have a glow effect with the blue. There's some on the lance, some on the fist and shield, and some on the knight's eyes. This is the base for the glowing blue areas. Next up, we need some Pro Acro White. Some people say this is the best white out there. Sadly, you always have to wipe the tip clean after use, which is annoying. Marcel then painted all those glowing areas with the white, leaving the blue in the recesses. Now, after I applied the fluorescent blue, I noticed it wasn't actually fluorescent. So we had a bit of a change of circumstances. Behold, fluorescent green. 
I couldn't be asked to repaint all those blue areas and then white again, so I just painted right over them with the fluorescent green. Luckily, it worked out okay. Here's what it looked like after the first coat. Some has run into the recesses. Good, it adds to the effect. We then return to the Pro Acryl White. We apply the white to the centre of the glowing areas, leaving the green around the outside. That has left us with this. Oh, I also painted some lightning effects on the knight's hand. Yep, we were at that stage of painting. This was that stage where I knew I was getting towards the end of the project. I just wanted to get it finished, you know? It's taken like six weeks so far. We then return to the fluorescent green again, luckily for the last time. Marcel then thinned this a lot and reapplied it to all the glowing areas. With the white showing through, it gives a nice glowing effect. This is what it looks like when it's finished. There's probably a better way to tackle glowing effects, but that's a video for another time. I think Byron's done a really good tutorial that we need to watch. Why didn't you watch it before you did this? Um, with the glowing effects finished, there's only one more painting stage left. Let's return to the Vallejo model colour black. After thinning the black, Marsal then commenced rimming the night. Rimming is always easier with thin paints as they flow better along that smooth surface. With the rimming session complete, the painting was finished and the night was ready to be assembled. Now, I cannot stress just how much I've been looking forward to assembling the night. Exciting times indeed. If you want to come and tell us about your exciting times, then please feel free to come along and join our friendly Discord server, which is not behind a paywall. There's a little link up here somewhere and also one down in the description below. We look forward to seeing you there. Now, while we put our paints away, I just want to give a massive shout out to all of our Patreons and channel members. Dan Yallop, Lee Blackley, Donald, Pine Tree, Bob Zilla, Charles Marlow, Andrew Marrington and Dr. Lee. Thank you all so, so much. We love you all. To glue the panels on, I'm using Tamiya cement. The normal gloopy stuff, not the thin stuff. Let's assemble. Now, if you want to get your own Serastus Knight Lancer to assemble, then check out the link up here somewhere. I'll also put one down in the uh, description below. Now, before we check out the finished article, I have a little package that needs attending to. It's only a small one this time. Let's have a look. And here it is, a little cardboard box that's been in the garage for over a year. Inside was a tiny little bundle. Unwrapping it proved to be a bit fiddly. What do you think it could be? If you guessed Space Crusade pin bad from 1990-ish, then you guessed right. It's wonderful, isn't it? Well, I've just noticed on the back here, it says, if you're enjoying this video, then please consider liking it and subscribing to the channel. That means you, William. If you are enjoying the content on the channel, then please consider joining the Patreon, the link to which is in the description below or up here somewhere. Should we put it on my hat with the others? There we go. That's three we've got on there now. We need some more. Anyway, without further ado, let's check out the finished article, shall we? And here it is, the fully painted and assembled House Padaxia Serastus Knight Lancer. I'm really rather happy with how it's turned out. The yellow and the flames are really eye-catching and are fantastic to look at. Luckily, those few mistakes we made on the banners and the glowing areas don't really show up so much at tabletop distance, so we've gotten away with that, I think. This is the biggest miniature Marcel's painted for a while and the only way to top it would be to paint a titan. I've decided we shall do that when we hit 10,000 subscribers. 
So please subscribe if you haven't already done so and we can paint a warhound. I really enjoyed painting that night. If you want to see some more videos in this Horus Heresy painting series, then check out the playlist up here somewhere. And as always, thank you very much for watching.